So Wednesday morning, we're all trying to get ready to leave to go to Texas. Tommy and I will be hauling the Malibu and the Falcon down on the tandem trailer behind my dually. Billy has his Nova loaded up in my 50-foot enclosed. He'll be pulling it down behind his Cummins. And then Tony and Tess plan on using my Suburban and Billy's open trailer to take their Mustang down once we get done doing a little bit of shipping and working on the car to get it ready to leave. Tony decided to make some adjustments to the rear suspension to center the rear axle better in the wheel wells because the slick was rubbing the quarter panel on the driver's side. Once he got that stuff taken care of, it was time to take it up the road, make sure it drives okay, and finally load it up on the trailer and tie it down. We were already running a few hours late by the time we hit the highway, and unfortunately the weather wasn't going to cooperate with us to try and make up any of our time on the road. What started out as a light rain quickly turned into a full-on monsoon by the time we hit Cincinnati. Now, although the rain was bad enough, the winds picked up something terrible as we made our way into Florence, Kentucky. Thankfully, the weather started to calm down just about sunset, and the rainfall had slowed down enough where it wasn't really that difficult to drive. Now, the plan at this point is to make our way into Arkansas, where Billy's got some hotel rooms reserved for everybody except for me. My plan is to stay in the big race car trailer and keep an eye on all the cars while everybody else sleeps at the hotel. I figured we'd find a truck stop or a Walmart or someplace to park the trailers, and after this long, miserable drive in the rain, I was really looking forward to getting some sleep. Unfortunately, that wasn't going to happen. jumps out of the Suburban. Hey, does a shifter inadvertently break sometimes? No. No, it doesn't. Now, as you can probably already tell, I'm about fed up with this trip, and we haven't even made it out of Arkansas yet. My night was pretty rough, but my day is about to get rougher. So, approximately 15 minutes after departing the area that I got no sleep in, we have blown a tire on the trailer stretch of highway known as the world's longest guardrail. And the tire that I have blown is on the driver's side. Meaning if I stop here, my ass 
last crack is on the white line of the interstate while I'm trying to change the tire. After towing on the berm at 45 miles an hour for about two miles, I finally find the end of the guardrail where I can get off the edge of the road far enough so that we can safely change the tire on the trailer. Tess and Tony pulled up behind me and Billy pulled over just ahead of me with the big trailer and started unpacking the tools and getting ready to try and get this tire changed out as quickly as possible. I backed the trailer up on top of some wood blocks to hopefully make it a little bit easier for somebody to change the tire. That somebody ended up being Tony and Billy took advantage of him until Tess walked up. This is what I like to call spinning the wheel of death. Every day you just get out of bed spin the wheel. Today we got blown tire along the world's longest stretch of guardrail. Today could be the daily double. Let's hope not. <laughs> so about the time that we were all back on the road and headed west, Vicki, Addie, and Addie's mom were all at the airport getting ready to take off for Vicki's very first flight from John Glenn International Airport in Columbus to <laughs> Dallas, Texas. I told Addie and her mom to try and film as much of Vicky's reaction as they possibly could. I wasn't sure how Vicky would handle flying for the first time, but she actually did really good. It was smooth sailing overhead, and down on the ground, we were trying to make up as much time as we crossed the Red River into Texas as we possibly could. We were about 70 miles east of Dallas when we caught up with Brendan, just before we needed to make our last fuel stop before we got to Dallas. We all pulled into Bucky's to top off our fuel tanks before we got close to downtown in case we got caught in traffic. According to our GPS, we've got to go basically right through downtown Dallas to get to Yellow Belly, which is actually in Grand Prairie, Texas, about 35 miles west of downtown. And just as I suspected, we hit some pretty major stop and go traffic during rush hour. But on the bright side, the rain had stopped. We're finally starting to see an opening in the skies just on the other side of downtown where the track is located. Even though we got hung up in some traffic, we were one of the first ones to pull in the gates here at Yellow Belt. And guess who met us at the front gate? Jimmy Dale and Miss Vicky. My biggest concern when I pulled in was trying to get my car unloaded and find some place to get it cleaned up. Because after a 15 hour drive and pouring down rain, the car was so dirty you couldn't hardly see out the windshield. After a quick search on my phone for local car washes, I found one that was about 15 minutes away from the track that appeared to be open 24 hours a day. So I hightailed it up there and ran the car through the automatic car wash real quick before I head back to the track to do a little bit of testing. Now I've always heard that yellow belly is difficult, but to look at the track it looked pretty fast to me. So I set my rear tire pressures on the high side and went to the starting line. The 60 foot felt incredibly fast. However, right at the 60 foot, there's a transition I couldn't get across. It went 140 60 foot on motor and it lost the tire at the transition, so I just let out of it. Yeah. But it left really good. That was on motor. Yeah, that was. That's the best 60 foot this car has ever made, period. No, it went 138 on, on the kit the other day. Yeah. I made a few little tweaks to the engine. I made a few little tweaks to the carburetor. I couldn't believe it. 140 60 foot on motor. Although I didn't get to make any full passes Thursday, I felt confident enough that I'd be okay Friday morning. When I got to the track, I went out to the front gate to see Jimmy, who was busy politicking with all the people coming in. Hey, and next year when he runs for governor, Jimmy Dale for governor. Jimmy Dale for governor. We were saying president, but now I mean, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah, we'll start a governor. Corner, that's already taken. Oh, you're hot, you're hot. You go yeah, straight to president. Some campaign promises are uh, not campaign that promises. important, but look, we yeah, got yeah. a line. Hey, we don't. You got your here. armband? You got your armband? Put it on. No look, they're mad. They're mad, horrible. Jimmy. They're yeah, mad. It's because they're Yankees, bro. The Yankees <laughs> get upset waiting in line. Right, well, thank you See you, buddy. The place was filling up fast, and it was a wild and hectic time for everybody, especially Miss Vicky 
who couldn't quite figure out where the drone was. And although we were all pretty busy, I had something I had to give to Jimmy Dale to help him clean up his act. Hey, 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 look at there. Oh my God. When you do your tire shine Man, business, let's get, on let's get on it. Now, Jimmy fancies himself as a talented Southern detailer. All right, we gotta make a good first impression, man. And how you make a good first impression? Shining on them. Just lay it in there thick and deep. And when you're meeting important people, you go ahead and get the full tire coverage. And this has been shown to pick up fuel economy. It's a trick of the South, actually. The Indians did this. After watching a few videos of Jimmy with his tire shine, I wanted to see what he thought of Jack's Wax Ultra. Yeah. All right, well, give me your honest opinion. Give me your honest I mean, opinion. Really? Yeah. It I bought this slicker now shit. I went right to the Jack's Wax Retail Center in Columbus on oh, yeah. 17th Avenue. It looks like at least a few days supply. Interestingly enough, I wasn't the only one interested in talking to Jimmy about tire shine. Check this out. We got a special delivery for Jimmy Dale himself. Here we go. No. Here we go. No. Special delivery. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's the fast. We're going to get a side-by-side side comparison. All right. Yeah. All right. Side-by-side right. comparison. All right. All right. Road that race. one, that road one road already went. Race. That's already, it already road says fast race. on it. It says fast on it. You already know it's it fast. I don't care what it says. I don't care about what it does. In the left lane, Lucas Slick Miss Fast and Easy Tire Trim and Shine. In the right lane, Jack Swack Super Blue. Honest opinion now. Yeah, yeah. No. All right, here we All go. Right, go right over the dirt. This right over the dirt. Stop. Right over the dirt. No, nothing. Oh, it's taking a lot more of this. Wait, look, it's this running off. Very, <laughs> oh, it looks man. It's very watery. It's running off. Very watery. Very watery. Very watery. That's not the way I like All right, to come do down things. here, Kevin. Okay, come down here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, there you go. You got that? I'm going to do half this tire in this and half this tire in Jack Swax, okay? Watch, I'm giving it all it's got. I don't know, man. That don't I'm giving it all it's got, Bill. It's so fast, it's already running off the tire. All right, hold on. Okay. Jack Swax, <laughs> super blue. Super Oh! Oh! Man. Look at that, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, look at that. I don't even have to tell y'all my thoughts. <laughs> look at that, Jimmy. That's pretty evident. <laughs> so look, running off the tire is your Lucas Slick Miss Fast and Easy. It's fast and easy to run it off. Look and at that. Look how beautiful. Jack Swax Super oh, Blue. Yeah. It even smells good. It does smell good. It smells good. It smells way better than your car. Oh, I'd man. have to say that Jack Swax definitely won. <laughs> yeah, Jack Swax for the win, bro. At this point, I felt like I'd already won a grudge race before we ever got to the driver's meeting, which was coming up pretty quick. Jimmy, of course, used it as another opportunity to campaign for governor. The driver's meeting did take a little bit longer than I expected. And by the time they'd called everybody up for first round, I was asleep in the Malibu, sitting in the staging lanes. I had rolled into the water box for first round of Cheap Street at about 1.30 a.m. And at this point, I had yet to make a full pass in either lane. My opponent had some problems staging and bumped through the beams, handing me an instant win. But by three o'clock in the morning, I was waving the surrender flag and giving up. I just couldn't stay awake. But old Jimmy Dale had other plans. My Malibu went to the staging lanes with him in it. Yo, so there I was at Yellow Belly driving the old man's car, Cracker Barrel, and finally you. I, I ain't never driven this car. I've never driven this car in my life. The old man was about to fall asleep. I said, on a scale of one to 10, how likely is it that I get to drive your car right now? He said, knock yourself out, Jimmy. Talk to me. So we got this dude over here in the Chevelle. I think homie came all the way from Arizona. He's a Jimmy Dailer, and he watches old man. So this is an awesome opportunity for him and me. Uh, I put some heat in the car in my field voice. Warm the car up a little bit. And she's running good, so we're going to try to bust his ass. Morgan's going to get a good video, and uh, I hope we get him, man. I've never wanted to win a race so bad. Well, that's a lot. But I've been wanting to win one. I really want to win this one, all right? Believe it or not, Jimmy Dale jumped in my Malibu and won second round. But it was up to me to get the Malibu through round three of Cheap Street Saturday afternoon. I had gotten an automatic win first round and Jimmy won second round for me while I was trying to get some sleep. 
and all I could think about when I went up for third round is how disappointed Jimmy would be in me if I didn't pull this off. After getting a few hours of sleep last night, I was starting to feel a lot better and a lot more confident when I went up for round four. Once again, I pulled off the win against this Camaro, turning him loose late into the run. That set me up for the final round with Team Joseph. They had asked if I was interested in splitting the pot in the final, and I told them I'd split it with them 50-50. However, I'm racing for that chain. After we ran the final, Joseph and his family came over to visit with us and congratulate us and take some pictures with me and Vicky. They were very happy to be going home with some money to help pay for the next weekend of racing coming up. I, on the other hand, was happy to be going home with a chain. Or so I thought. I'd forgotten. I'd made a deal with someone. Oh, that's right. I did promise you, didn't I? Oh, shit. I don't get to keep a chain. I did. I promised her. I said, if I win, I'll give it to you. That's right. So there I was. So there I was, that yellow belly jacket. Oh, he got us all the way. All he needed was a coon hat oh. and a mullet wig. Oh. That's just another small hey. thing. Hey, do the, do the thing. What? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go to JimmyDaleRacing.com, boy. He get you one of these bad boys. Hey, gentlemen, so, split. All right. Sometimes split. gangsters are gentlemen. And no, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> gangsters don't yeah. race for money. We don't give two fucks about money. What we're racing for respect. Chain. Chain, uh, <laughs> bro. <laughs> We Can race I, for chains up in here. Oh no. Yeah. Okay, so listen. So we them guys were very plus auto parts this week. Yeah. Sorry. Be like, Stop, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, no. Stop, no, but seriously, them guys were very nice. Everybody that every single person that raced me this weekend were very nice, very respectful. Come up and say, hey man, I love the Jimmy Dale show. I didn't know nothing about you until I watched Jimmy Dale. <laughs> but I'm glad I watched Jimmy Dale. <laughs> <laughs> now I watch the old farts grumpy. Is that what it is? The old, uh, yeah. the old the grumpy old, man's garage. The grumpy grunt. Oh, oh yeah, the old man's garage. The there it is. Man's. Okay. <laughs> but no, seriously, everybody was really, really nice to us this weekend. What class we did you win? Cheap Street. <laughs> what did I tell you you should run this weekend? Cheap Street. Hey, what have we been talking about for months and months and months? Dude, I really liked it because nobody Cheap knows what Street. the index is. What? What? Huh? Nobody knows what the index is. No. So, okay, so you, you got to come back in the fall and you can get an NHRA cheap street belt buckle, boy. What? Yeah. yeah. What? With, with the Wally, yeah. old man. You got a Wally at the house. Oh, Wally. man. I ain't even the got belt. that. Yeah, but, but I got this knot, boy. You <laughs> <laughs> right. right. ain't driving in the fall, all right? Oh, That's oh, time to drive, oh, all right? oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you managed to tell me that you went through the whole cheap street field with a foot brake 700 R4 AC power steering and power brakes. All but one round and somebody snuck in my car while I was in bed. Who did that? I don't know, he must be a driving some bitch. He must be. <laughs> driving but somebody. I will say my brakes are warped. All my brakes yeah. are warped. I got oh, put man, new brakes all around. There was a murder on the tree. There was a murder. Yeah. There was a murder. I, I said, man, we've been hanging out here for a minute. Bye. <laughs> so after me and Jimmy Dale got done cutting up in the winter circle for a little bit, I took the Malibu back to the mezzanine, parked it by Vicky's booth, and busted out some of my Jack's Wax detailing stuff to clean off some of the dust and put the car out there where everybody can see it for themselves. And it was a good opportunity for me to meet some people that came to see us and check out the car. It's really hard for me to take the time to do this kind of stuff while I'm racing or if I'm helping the kids. But now that we're all out of competition for the day, I kind of enjoyed being able to just kick back 
and talk to people and relax for a little while. That night after the racing was done, we packed everything up and I actually drove the Malibu out of the track and drove it back to the Airbnb. So I'd have a way to get back to the track the next morning. Vicky was making her rounds, getting everybody awake and getting them ready to head out the door. Especially Brendan, who needs a little extra time to do his hair. You know, I woke up this morning, I, I walked past your room like twice. And I'm like, dude, there's a hot blonde in there. And then I'm like, oh no, it's yeah. Brendan. Yeah, unfortunately. It's, it's Brendan. <laughs> you have any goals or expectations today? Oh. I'm gonna try not to get upset. That's a good goal. So while we're sitting there eating Easter cookies, waiting for everybody to get ready, back home, Uncle Buckwheat is taking care of the dogs. Yeah, early morning truck rides for Chevy and June. Oh God, no, Chevy. When we all came out of the house to get in the cars to go to the track, Robbie spotted an ice cream cart. Or maybe the guy with the ice cream cart spotted Robbie. Either way, I think everybody walked away happy. After we all got done eating our ice cream out on the sidewalk, it was time to jump into vehicles and head back to Yellow Belly to pick up the trucks and trailers and finally start heading out to XRP, which stands for Extreme Raceway Park. It's a really nice eighth mile track that's very well prepped and it's only 45 minutes from Yellow Belly. They just so happen to be hosting a Sunday test and tune today and it's a perfect opportunity for us to take the Malibu and the Falcon and see just exactly what they're capable of on one of the finest surfaces anywhere in the United States. While the track crew was getting the surface ready, I started getting the Malibu ready to go up and make its first hit. And the first thing I did was increase the tire pressure and put a nice warm full nitrous bottle in the trunk so that I'd be ready when the time comes to turn this car loose on the kits. But first I want to make a motor hit to see where the car's at. All right, guys, we got our first hit done on motor. The density altitude isn't quite as good today as it has been while we were at Yellow Belly. 60 foot was 143 with a six. Uh, it went 660 with a nine at 10246. That is by far the fastest this car has ever run on motor. Now I looked at the video. I think the shocks probably extended a little bit too fast in the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some shock adjustments, tighten it up just a little bit. We can put a hot bottle in it and start on one kit and just see where we go. As I'm getting ready to turn the first kit on the Malibu and let it take flight, Vicki is actually flying out of Texas. It's hard for me to imagine that she's probably gonna be home by the time this test and tune session is over this evening. Anyway, on one kit with a nitrous ramp of one second and a one-tenth delay, the Malibu goes 621 at 110 miles an hour. So I go ahead and swap out the nitrous bottle for a new warm one out of the bottle bath, tightened up all four shocks one click, and got ready to turn the second kit on at about one and a half seconds into the run. There was only one problem. Every time the second kit would start to roll in in the middle of second gear, the transmission would begin to slip. It just simply could not hold the power that the car was making on both kits. I tried everything I could think of to get that transmission to hold and on the last pass it was such a hurry I forgot to put the gas cap on. So it made a little bit of a mess on the track but I was the last car down so it really didn't make any difference anyway. We made it home okay and by Wednesday morning my first thought was getting the car unloaded and finding out whether or not the transmission actually survived that beating that it took at XRP. Thankfully, when I took the car up the road, it shifts through all the gears and everything worked just fine. The question is, for how long? Anyway, when I got back to the shop from the test drive, Billy had made it there and he had started working on the tune on the Mustang. He had a handful of parts that he needed to go pick up at 11th Avenue, so we hopped in the Malibu for an extended test drive 
into downtown Columbus. Uncle Terry was working in there today and got Billy all taken care of with everything he needed in one fail swoop right there at 11th Avenue. After we got all our parts gathered up, we jumped back into Malibu and took the back way home to avoid rush hour traffic. The sweepstakes for the Mustang has gone live last week. You can get on streetracingchannel.com and see how you can enter to win the Mustang. But for tonight, our main goal is to get the car fired up when we get back home, put a few new parts on it, and start working on the tune-up, because Billy wants to possibly take it to the track this weekend to do a little testing. Anyway, when we got back to the shop, Billy got started on the Mustang, and I went out to check and see what Kenny Powers was up to with my John Deere. Scrappy was helping him pick up sticks and brush out of the property line and carrying it out to the burn pile. It was just about sunset when Billy finished working on the tune on the Mustang. He felt he had it ready to take it up the road for a test drive and then maybe go make a little test hit on our test spot right up the road from the house. All right, guys, so out here in the shop, I want to thank uh, Jimmy Dale, Michael Poland, and everybody at Nitrous Express who helped get that race done. Uh, thank you to everybody at XRP for letting us come out there and test. And uh, <laughs> I made uh, probably a couple of passes I probably shouldn't have after they closed the lanes, but technically not, but I barely squeezed in there. Um, everybody at XRP was really, really nice to us welcomed us in, uh, let us store our trailer there at the track overnight. So thank you to those guys, uh, the owner there. I friend requested him today on Facebook and just really nice people. And that place is fantastic. It's beautiful, clean, spotless, good food. Go check out XRP if you ever get a chance. We had a great time at the gut, Yellow Belly. Uh, the kids didn't do so hot, although the Nova did uh, pretty decent, although it had a little problem. Um, I think the oil drain backs from the turbos are giving him a little bit of trouble. So, uh, Billy elected to park the car instead of continue to run it with a possible oiling problem. And it wasn't something that the engine builder did. This was just simply the way the turbos drain back into the engine, uh, their, their oil. So that was unfortunate. Uh, the Falcon didn't do so good. I think they kind of shanked the tune up on that, but it happens. Um, kind of disappointing as far as that goes, but somehow I managed to, uh, pull in a win for the team down there, I guess. So I had a great time. Thank you, Tom. Thanks for stepping in for me because we were late getting out of here and that kind of made us late getting to our, uh, halfway destination. And then I didn't get any sleep there and then blew on a tire and just rain all the way there. It was kind of a miserable trip down. Uh, the weekend started off pretty rough, but uh, we managed to pull it off there at the end and make it home, no problem. Uh, my old dually rolled over 365,000 miles on the way home as we came back into Ohio. Um, just can't really say enough about that old truck. It just keeps going and going and going. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up this week. Uh, of course, the Mustang giveaway car the phantom gt my car is uh just about ready to go for a test run uh billy made a little test hit on out here on the street tonight which you saw but i think he's planning on maybe going testing someplace at a track this weekend and he wants to see what the car runs before we do the giveaway um he did some more tuning on it today he said it runs really good he made some pulls out on the road and it runs really good he said so we're looking forward to maybe getting that car out this weekend. I think Allison's going to get her car out this weekend and go test as well. Uh, I may take the Malibu. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, the Malibu on both kits makes so much power now that um, the transmission just won't hold it. Uh, and it's not broken. You know, we, we drove it clear to Jegs and back today. No problem. Uh, transmission still works and shifts fine, but... Uh, I talked to Dion at Vickers Performance Transmissions, the guy that does all our transmission work, and he said second gear doesn't have clutches. It's a band uh, that grabs 
the outside of a drum and stops it from turning, and that is second gear. And unfortunately, I don't think that band is able to hold uh, the drum still uh, when you apply that much power to the transmission. Um, and there's really, I don't know, I don't know if there's any way to fix that. So I have another 700R4 already built for the car that's got even better parts in it than what I've got. But Dion said it's not really going to make any difference for that particular problem because that's probably not fixable for a 700R4. So I may have to build a 4L80E for the Malibu. And I started talking to Dion about that tonight. We're going to get started on one of those, I think. And then I'll probably just have to get like a uh, stepper motor to run the speedometer in the car. I think uh, Dakota Digital or somebody like that makes one. If you know of uh, anybody that makes a stepper motor or an electronic um, electronic uh, speedometer controller or motor or whatever to run a 4L80E with a factory cable-driven speedometer, put it in the comments. I'd like to know about it uh, because I'm going to be looking into that pretty soon because I'm not going without my speedometer. That car has uh, 34,000 original miles, and I want to make sure that the mileage stays correct on that car. I'm very adamant about that. It's probably one of the lowest mile uh, G-body Malibu's left in the country. Uh, so I want to keep that speedometer working. I want to keep the odometer hooked up. So that's about it for tonight, guys. Check the website out. Vicky says we are fully stocked on the website now. There's a whole bunch of stuff in stock that's been out of stock for a while if you've been looking for something or waiting for something to come back. Outside of that, I'm going to head back in and try and get this video finished up and get it edited and get it uploaded. So thank you all for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and all that. We appreciate you very much. If you came to see us at Yellow Belly, thank you. See you all next time.